This project started uh, three or four years ago with a very surprising observation. And that observation was that a particular chemical that we call a biotinylated isoxazole chemical crystallized in aqueous buffer. What happened was that these crystals, when we mixed them with a lysate from cells, caused the precipitation of hundreds of different proteins. And those proteins almost exclusively represented RNA binding proteins. So the sequences of these proteins, these RNA binding proteins, that facilitated precipitation by the isoxazole crystals are what we call low complexity sequences. And these are polypeptide sequences that tend not to use all 20 amino acids, but use a very small subset oftentimes in repetitive arrays. So these low complexity sequences were, became the focus of our research and as we expressed proteins and purified and incubated those proteins we, we observed a very strange phenomenon in that they would form a gel. The low complexity sequences of this protein FUSE, which is an RNA binding protein, it has two paralogs, one called Ewing sarcoma or, or EWS, and yet a third paralog called TAF15. Now normally these are RNA binding proteins, but in the context of cancer, the low complexity domains of these sequences, these exact domains that form our hydrogels and fibers, those sequences become translocated as driving events in the formation of cancer. Having made this observation, we began to realize that this process of gelation driven by these low complexity sequences might have something to do with gene expression or transcription. Our earlier experiments, our precipitation experiments, were carried out with cytoplasmic lysates, but now realizing that this phenomenon may have something to do with gene expression, we carried out the same sorts of experiments with nuclear extracts. These are the nuclear proteins that were most prominently precipitated by the biotinylated isoxazole. The new observation was the second protein on the list, and that's the largest subunit of RNA polymerase II. So it came as a surprise that RNA polymerase II and its largest subunit would be precipitated so effectively by the biotinylated isoxazole. We've known for a long time that this CTD, the 52 repeats of the heptanucleotide sequence, is indeed disordered. And sure enough, that turned out to be the determinant of the polymerase that allowed it to be precipitated by the isoxazole crystals. The mammalian CTD consists of 52 tandem repeats of a consensus seven amino acid sequence. Through the work of many labs, we've come to understand that the CTD plays a central role in connecting synthesis of RNA to its subsequent processing. The heptad repeats in the CTD are phosphorylated, and these marks change as Pol2 passes through the transcription cycle, such that the CTD can interact with different processing factors at different stages of elongation. Prior to initiation, Pol2 engages the general transcription factors with an unphosphorylated CTD. So when we began to study the CTD, we noticed that it would not polymerize by itself the way these other low complexity sequences would. And so we immediately tested whether the CTD might bind to the TAF15 hydrogels or the FUSE hydrogels. And sure enough, in its unphosphorylated state, the CTD of RNA polymerase II bound very avidly to the hydrogels formed by the TAF15 low complexity sequence. What we did was to ask the question whether phosphorylation of the CTD might prevent binding to these TAF15 hydrogels. Sure enough, that was the case. But more excitingly, we could bind the CTD as a GFP fusion protein to these TAF15 hydrogels and then expose the gel to the CDK enzyme and ATP. And as you'll see in the ensuing movie, this affects the release of the bound CTD and allows it to come off the hydrogel droplet and go back into the chamber slide uh, of our reaction mixture. So what we speculate that we're seeing in this reaction is a recapitulation of what may happen to the CTD and the RNA polymerase as it's binding in its unphosphorylated form, then being phosphorylated by 
the CDK enzymes to facilitate release from the promoter and transcriptional elongation. On the DNA molecule, we have the DNA-bound fusion protein between the DNA binding domain and the low complexity domain. So this would be the translocation product. And if it's bound iteratively to DNA, we think that facilitates polymerization of the low complexity sequence to create a fiber. And that fiber creates the binding site for the CTD of RNA polymerase. As a function of the action of the CDK enzymes, these cyclin-dependent kinase enzymes in ATP, the CTD is uh, phosphorylated. That phosphorylation allows the CTD to be released from the polymeric fiber for transcriptional elongation. Perhaps the most provocative speculation of our paper, not just this paper, but the previous papers authored by Masato and my former graduate student Tina Hahn, is that these low complexity sequences form polymeric fibers and in order for them to function the polymerization reaction is absolutely critical. 